Hi, my name is Kas Oostvogel. I'm the product manager for NAD and it's a pleasure to be presenting to you the NAD M66 streaming pre-amplifier. We're going to be discussing quite a few things here. We'll be talking about some of the really special technology that this device has on board and which makes it truly unique. So let's talk about some of the really nice bits on the inside of the unit. Unfortunately, I can't show all of the details because we have separate and shielded sections. Let me take the lid off. And all being well, you'd be seeing the internals here. And let's start with the power supplies, because we have separate power supplies for the analog and the digital section. Here's a power supply section, and here is a power supply section. And each goes to their own separate boards for whatever it was designed to. So at the top here, you see the digital board. So most of this is all digital. And here you see the BlueBoss module, which caters for all of the streaming 2492K bits. At the same time, you also see the antennae for the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi signals. And the interesting thing is, you can switch Wi-Fi and Bluetooth off in the menu, which means you don't get any high frequency pollution into the analog circuitry, although we already prepared for that to be as minimal as possible. You can see this cover here uh, with a nice uh, printing of the actual circuit diagram of the unit. And this at the same time is an aluminium plate which shields the digital part from the analog part and vice versa. I should say it shields the analog part from the digital section where there can be lots of high frequency stuff going on. So below this board that you can actually see, what you can't see is the board that lives underneath here. And that board has all of the important analog bits, uh, including the D2A converter, which again is in a section of its own and then goes into the analog section. There's so a few interesting things going on there. For instance, the volume control. The volume control consists of a ladder resistor rather than a conventional volume potentiometer, as they're normally called, which has thermal noise, which will degrade the sound, which will degrade the signal. It's actually a whole bunch of tiny, tiny resistors that are linked in series parallel that will allow you full volume control from the very soft to loud as well in quarter of dB steps. So from the very lowest volumes to all the way to the top, it is always correct. Now, the other nice thing is, is that when it comes out of the volume control, uh, we buffer it yet again, and that signal goes straight to the XLR outputs, which of course are balanced as well. So as soon as the signal comes in, it is made balanced. And of course, we also have balanced inputs. So if you use that, then the signal is balanced all the way from input to output without any interference, no other components in there. The entire signal, if you put it in pure analog mode, remains truly analog. Uh, what we have to do, of course, is switch the inputs, and for that we use very high quality relays, which you can actually hear clicking when you switch in inputs. All the rest of the surrounding electronics are of the very highest quality. The op-amps we use, the resistors that we use, all of those components are absolutely the very best. The other thing that we have here is a very high quality phono stage, whereby we have separate inputs for phono, um, moving magnets and for moving coil. So this being a pure analog amplifier as well, we've taken particular care of the phono stage, which consists both of an MC moving coil and MM moving magnet section. Again, the utmost has been done to keep signal to noise ratio as high as possible. So it also incorporates an infrasonic filter, basically a filter that cuts out everything below 15 Hertz. This is good because it copes with warped records and also rumble sounds from the turntable itself, which can cause excessive cone movement from the loudspeakers and which do not contribute in any sort of way to the quality of the sound. So it's something that is always switched on. So let me talk you through the back panel of the M66. And I'm gonna start all the way over on this side where you see these blind panels where it says MDC, 
MDCs stands for Modular Design Construction. And what this will allow you to do is to update or upgrade the unit by taking this blanking plate off and insert a complete module into the slot that will reveal itself once it's, it's, it's removed. And that can be anything that we want to develop for it. Going from the MDC modules, you can see the phono input stage, the separate moving magnet and moving coil inputs, and of course the grounding terminal. And here you see the line level inputs, the digital inputs, two coax, two optical, AES EBU, and then also a line level input in balanced mode. As you would also expect, XLR out fully balanced to go to the power amplifier or power amplifiers and a normal RCA left right output also to go to a power amplifier or even an active speaker if you're so inclined. One really interesting and unusual aspect that you see here are the four independent subwoofer outputs both in XLR balanced and in normal unbalanced through RCA. Why would you want to have four subwoofer outputs on a stereo component? And this is where the M66 breaks new ground. Because the four subwoofer outputs will allow you to get the absolute best bass in your listening environment, in your listening seat. You may be familiar that acoustics in a room can wreak havoc with bass reproduction. In a room, Base frequencies can go a lot higher or very low by cancelling each other out or adding to each other. And these room modes are just there. You cannot really avoid them. They will have a great impact on the way your bass sounds. One way of dealing with that is to add subwoofers to the room. And in a way that sounds counterintuitive, but it is the reason why we have four independent subwoofer outputs. It is common wisdom that if you can have more subwoofers in a room, positioned in a careful sort of way, you can approximate nearly perfect bass. There are some things that make this difficult to achieve. And that is why we've incorporated direct live bass control. And direct live bass control is an active way of steering the subwoofers in such a way that you get really truly even response in your listening spot. And this makes for perfect integration. So in your listening spot, you don't have suck outs in bass, you don't have strong peaks. It is true, even, very solid bass. And the way direct works with these subwoofers is that where one subwoofer may be short in an area where there is bass, another subwoofer positioned at a different position in the listening room can fill in for the other subwoofer. Or if you have too much bass, another subwoofer can actually be steered in such a way that in, in counter phase, it will make sure that the level in the listening position is exactly right. And this requires a lot of processing, and that is exactly what Direct will allow you to do. You do a single measurement for five positions or up to nine positions in your listening position and around it. And Direct will measure and analyze the room. And for each of the speakers, and also for each individual subwoofer, it will create a filter which all together work together to make sure that you have really good bass response where you are seated. Many people believe that subwoofers can actually really detract from true sound quality. And yes, if you were to use bass control with this unit, you need very good and also very fast subwoofers so that a big boom really is a boom and not like a boom so that you don't get that sluggish sort of sound, which many subwoofers do. Great for home theater, but not for music reproduction. The other thing that Direct does is that it also makes sure that it's time aligned and even face aligned between all of the speakers themselves. So if you have a really fast, impactful sound, like a bass drum, it goes very short, boom, and not like boom because it all comes together in your listening position at the right time, keeping it short, sweet, and very dynamic. Bass control is one of the greatest innovations when it comes to dealing with room acoustics, which really is the last barrier to enjoying great sound. Normally, bass control is expensive. If you were to have a direct-ready component, 
and you need to buy the licenses to the run direct live and direct base control for multiple subwoofers, you would have to buy a license for direct, which will set you back 848 US dollars. The licenses for base control and for direct live and for four subwoofers are included with the unit. So that makes it great value for money and it will give you the best base possible. So one of the core elements of the M66 is that it uses BlueOS for streaming. And BlueOS by now is a pretty well-known system to be streaming high-resolution audio with, which also allows you to share the music with different rooms in other rooms, and also many musical services that you can connect to. Uh, for instance, a Cobas, a Tidal, um, Amazon Music HD, many of these music services that also provide high-res content are available directly from the user and through the interface which is BlueOS. Handy as an app on your phone, uh, on your laptop, uh, be it uh, iOS, be it Windows, be it Mac, whatever, all of those sort of things BlueOS will cater for. Let's talk about a new feature that we've introduced here which is DDH and DDH stands for Dynamic Digital Headroom. And what it does is address a problem that has been known for ages, which is called inter-sample clipping. So what happens if you are playing back your digital music, which is basically chopped up in 44, 100,000 bits or 48,000 bits, and each of these samples, as you can see in the illustration, will take a segment of the music. Now what happens is if the peak of that music falls in between these two samples, rather than make it a round connection, it will cross straight across. And that is basically distortion, which is not what you want. The way to solve this is as elegant as it is simple. And what we do is we take the entire musical uh, dynamic reach, so if that's 16 bits, and we shift that down by 3 dB. By shifting it down 3 dB, we create headroom for the analog filter to finish the curve off rather than create that flat line. And that is much better than oversampling, because if you were to oversample, you still have that 0 dB headroom. So by lowering everything by 3 dB, we create the headroom that will negate this distortion. Music will sound more natural and it will sound much better. And you can actually hear it, there's quite a few albums out there that have been mastered too hot. That is to say, the recording engineers were too close to the maximum level that you can record on digital audio and perhaps weren't aware that there were samples falling in between the samples themselves and thus creating this clipping phenomena. There's quite a few albums out there that have this. And the difference is that you can hear it with slightly splashy highs, rim shots that sound sort of harsh, all of these sort of things. And by using DDH, you actually remove that. Now, as I said, we shift everything down by 3 dB. Shifting down by 3 dB means that we sacrifice 3 dB of headroom in terms of signal to noise ratio. With 16 bits, that is no problem. For the very simple reason, 16 bits is limited to 96 dynamic range ratio anyway. And by shifting down by 3 dBs, we're still well within the limits of what the M66 can do. In anticipation of the release of the M66, we already released the NAD M23, which is the perfect power amplifier to complement this pre-amplifier. The M23 uses Purifier Eigentact amplifier technology, and the way we've implemented this technology really takes it to the very edge and gets the maximum of what you can do with that technology. The distortion levels are so low that they can hardly be measured with even the best of stereo equipment. Signal to noise ratios are incredibly low. This really is the power amplifier that really complements the M66. It has a power output of 2 by 200 watts, which in most normal cases should be more than enough, particularly if you're using subwoofers. However, if you have large speakers and you want to play them loud, you can add another M23. You put them in bridge mode, it will happily deal with what is called difficult loudspeakers, 
and you will have a system that is 2 by 700 watts and we mean real watts. So from 20 to 20 hertz, both channels driven at the same time with incredibly low distortion that as mentioned is beyond almost the reach of what can be measured. For power amplifiers, I think we've got you covered as well. It was a pleasure to introduce you to the NAD M66 digital preamp processor. And we urge you, if you're interested in it, go and listen for yourself. The performance of this is really as best as you can get it. Go and visit your local NAD dealer and ask for a demonstration of the M66. You'll be really pleasantly surprised.